This past year has been the year of UI overhauls, which started with Apple releasing iOS 18, Samsung following suit with One UI 7, and now finally, Google out of all smartphone manufacturers have released the Android 16 beta with their new design language. Right off the bat, animations have been a key focus for this update, and it clearly shows. The animations across the UI have been updated and share a bouncy feel to them, maybe while swiping notifications, clearing out opened apps, or summoning the quick settings. Following that is a revamp layout for your quick settings and notification shade. The previous implementation had two main problems. Limited tile access per page, and the shade stuck to a dark theme, regardless of whether or not dark mode was enabled, severely limiting customization. The new quick settings, notification shade, the app drawer, and even the recents menu switch over to a translucent and blurred appearance, addressing both these problems. These not only look cleaner in my opinion, but feel like a seamless part of the operating system itself rather than separate spaces. As is also clearly visible, you now have the option to customize each tile size to take either one or two spaces, finally allowing you to set up to 16 tiles per page instead of the 8 you were limited to with previous iterations. Toggling any tile also animates the shape of the tile to be less rounded. The quick settings also support tile categorization, making it easier for you to find the tiles you need and add them quickly. Some things that are also updated here are the toggles for Bluetooth and the modes section. In earlier implementations of these settings, enabling these options would require you to go through a selection pop-up screen instead of just allowing you to toggle them on or off. The new implementation still has the pop-up screen, though also provides a toggle switch allowing you to turn on or off the respective setting with a single tap. And I'd love to see a similar implementation for the Wi-Fi toggle as well. The UI features revamp sliders for brightness and volume control, and the notifications section has a wider button to clear existing notifications and two small buttons for viewing notification history and settings. Over the past few updates, it also feels like the extra dim functionality has been integrated to the brightness slider itself, as the toggle doesn't share the same impact it used to on prior updates. Moving to the status bar, and again we see an updated look, with a battery percentage now found inside its icon, with different colors indicating different status conditions. The quick settings page also shows an estimate of how long your device will last before needing a charge based on your current usage patterns. The recent menu has also been tweaked slightly, now featuring the app info and various multitasking options at the top left. Honestly, I'd predict this to go through more changes, as the title of the app being mentioned as a part of the preview does obscure on-screen content. I'd also suggest moving the clear all button to the bottom of the interface for easier access rather than requiring a full swipe across the apps currently running. The settings app has undergone a visual overhaul, bringing back color-coded icons we'd last seen on Android 9. What I've also noticed after this update is that each settings title is tightly packed at the top with minimal spacing, which is a stark contrast to the well-spaced titles in Android 15 that made one-handed navigation slightly easier. I much prefer the previous layout for its ease of use, and while swiping down in this new iteration does bring back the older, more spacious design, this feels rather counterintuitive, requiring an extra step during navigation. The wallpaper and style section has also been redesigned, with new options that allow you to add custom images and fit them in a shaped cutout with a depth effect, similar to what we've seen on One UI. There are also options that allow you to add weather effects, which also detect depth and affect the look of your wallpaper accordingly. There have also been some changes with the lock and home screen formatting, with the position of the date, day and weather being slightly adjusted on the lock screen and the at-a-glance widget now being slightly smaller on the home screen, allowing for more room for an extra row of apps or widgets. And is still as stubborn as ever, not being removable at all. In terms of new clock styles, sadly, apart from the option to change the font thinness or thickness for the default watch style, there aren't any new ones available on this beta at the moment. There's also been a change to the default font, which, honestly, I found quite odd. It's now more bold and rounded compared to the previous typeface, which looked clean and served its purpose. What I also feel is that this trend of bringing more emotion to operating systems could lead to mixed rates of adoption amongst users. Emotional engagement, after all, is subjective and not universally desirable. Interfaces described as expressive or playful might feel distracting to people who prefer minimalist and rather functional interfaces that made Google's material design popular in the first place. And while I for certain have been enjoying this refresh so far, I do think it could potentially alienate users who value simplicity over expressiveness. Now it goes without saying that as this is the very first release of Material 3 Expressive and being a part of Android's beta program, this is a work in progress build and some bugs are to be expected. With its expected final release being around August later this year, Google is aiming to breathe new life into Android, following a few relatively lackluster updates in recent years. Whether or not it succeeds at doing that is a story only time can tell. But as it stands, it does seem quite promising. A like on this video goes a long way and a sub even longer. That being said, thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.